Hi, everybody. Greg Rust with you for another edition of the KTM Summer Grill here at speedcafe.com. Each day over the course of the summer break here, we are catching up with all sorts of high-profile motorsport guests. And today we are delighted to have him beaming in all the way from North Carolina, the IndyCar champion. Will Power from all of us here, welcome and congratulations. Yeah, thank, thanks for having me on, Greg. Appreciate it. Tell us about your year because they often say, Will, that your your first title is a special one, but that was an epic season and certainly one to savor, wasn't it? Oh, it was uh it was a great season. It's it's probably as far as yeah, you know, consistency goes, I, I can't remember a season like it. And um, you know, it was it was the game plan from the outset, first race. You know, I'd even say to my crew, I, I don't want to be quickest on pit lane. We don't. I said, we're, we're just doing a full season of nothing stakes. Just do the job that you know, and nothing more, nothing, you know, special. Never need to be quickest. So as far as on pit lane, on the track, strategy-wise, I mean, we, it was it was great. Great consistency. Nine podiums in the season. I, I haven't had one where you're finishing more than half the races uh, on the podium. So an amazing year. Very fortunate to have a great group of guys around me, preparing the car, obviously the team, and ski, uh, you know, with all three cars did extremely well. So, um, feeling very grateful. Tell me about that mindset, right? You know, to take that attitude, that approach into the season, how important was that in the final outcome? And what's been the, the driver here, Will? Because you seem to have this, this, a little bit more relaxed uh, approach to things, the way that you're tackling it. What's that about? Well, I would say uh, it's just experience. You know, I'm, uh, I've am i been around a long time and I've seen about everything you can see in motorsport with things that can go right and wrong. Um, and, and uh, yeah, I'm, I understand that you just, you simply got to accept that, that you're going to have some bad days. Um and then not to really think about them and, and not to, I guess, react emotionally when you're in that position. So, uh, yeah, it's a whole combination of things, though. I mean, I, I've been with my engineer for more than a decade and, and I've obviously been with Penske for more than a decade. So I, uh, I know the game extremely well. You know, inside and out, I reckon the last little piece for me was the mental game and uh, more absolutely on top of that now. I'm mentally better than I've ever been in my life. Good on you. I mean, that may be a personal thing that you don't um, want to perhaps open up on too much, but I mean, your, your colleague in, and teammate in Scott McLaughlin is, is well documented on some of the ways that he has sought support beyond the motor racing sphere that has ultimately helped him on track. Is that something you've done or is that more, more you know, the guidance of people like Roger and those internally with the team that you just, just talked about? Over the years, I have uh, I have seen. I actually, I, I, you go to a guy called Jacques Delaire, and um, actually Shane Watson, the cricket player, just put a book out, and I met Shane at the Dally Am Awards. Uh, I want to say it was uh, 2015. Just having to sit next to him, and he was struggling mentally, and I said, "Well, uh, you can't explain my situation." And I said, I, "I got a guy that I think that will help you tremendously." And he flew all the way over here. Um, now we got dinner, introducing this guy, and he's uh, he said he never played better. He never was better after that. And that's a guy that I saw years ago, decades ago, and but uh, more than a decade ago. Um, uh, but um, yeah, the, the the mental game is honestly you can see as many people as you like, but only you know yourself well enough to understand no one else knows what makes you tick no one else knows what sort of you know level of uh uh pressure you need on yourself you know it and i think you just just knowing myself uh better than ever i'm in my 40s uh helps tremendously i know how much pressure i need to put on myself um i know when to go when not to go i just i think that's in the mental game it's it's it doesn't you know one thing doesn't fit all You've got to know yourself because there's some people that you've got to bring down a bit. There's some people you've got to bring up. I mean, it's uh, it's a tricky game. The mind is very complex and, and only you know your own mind. You know your own mind better than anyone can ever tell you anything. So 
I think there's a lot of that in there. Will, one of the great assets that you have, I guess, is family mate, isn't it? Your your wife, um, the kids, you're a dad now. How much has that um, element, that that um, distraction from racing, that escape from racing been, been a help to you? And, um, you know, a part two to that question, do you do you miss home? Are you missing Australia and Queensland? I, um, yeah, I, I definitely miss, miss my family at home. My, my mum and dad, my brothers, you know, I wish I could see them more than just once a year, but, but yeah, then family life here and, in, in the, you know, with my wife, my little five-year-old, absolutely love it. I, uh, I love kids and, you know, the best thing that ever happened to me was having a kid. I wish I could have, have, have more, but, uh, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's, a, it's a good balance. You've got to definitely work hard at your craft. There's no question about that. But you've also got to enjoy family time and uh, get your mind off, uh, you know, the intensity that motorsport is. So finding that balance for me is, uh, you know, I feel like I have found that balance. I mean, they come to every race with me. We get a bus and um, mm-hmm. so they're there every time and we have pl- spend plenty of time with them. But just in a good spot in my life, I would say. Indeed you are. We're pleased about that, mate. For the Penske organisation, for Team Penske to win both the NASCAR crown and the IndyCar title together, um, I think that's a feat that they've been trying for 30 years to do in the in the same season. For you to have played such a significant part in that, what does that mean? How did that feel? Oh, it felt great uh, to be a part of that, you know, and it wasn't even something that I realised until it was happening. Yeah, you know, Joey went on to to win the championship so you know extremely happy for roger he's put so much into motorsport here in the u.s and i think he deserves everything he gets and um yeah uh it's really cool to be a part of that uh and and uh you know i think uh i think roger to get a third nascar championship was really cool too because i remember how uh you know how happy he was to get that first one with brad keselowski so to get two in the one year, that's an amazing achievement here in the U.S. Two of the, the top top level motorsport series to be able to say he won, the, he won both of them in the same year. That really is something. Sure is. Now your stable mate Scott McLaughlin's having a summer vacation in Australia and New Zealand. Um, how's he settled in to uh, the team, and what's the whole dynamic been like with a with an Aussie and a Kiwi in the mix there? It's uh, it's great to have a bit of that sense of humour from down under, and uh, I have to say Scott's done a tremendous job. I mean, you know, he, I said to him in his first season, he was getting a bit frustrated. I said, "Man, it will go up and down. It just will. You'll have a lull and you'll struggle, and and that's just the name of the game." But uh, he turned up in the second year and and was definitely ticking all the boxes he needed to finish right there. And you know, yeah, I thought the top ten was the goal. He finished in the top five, so. He's definitely going to be a championship contender next year, and uh, I think he's a real asset to the team. brings uh, brings a lot of good stuff, and you know he's had a lot of experience at a high level. So he he uh, he understood coming into it how to approach it. He wasn't like a typical rookie. You know, making these big mistakes where he hit the wall. He kept it off the wall and um, just got as much experience as he could. So yeah, it. Happy to, I think, you know, whole team's happy to have him. I really enjoyed working with him. Now, you shared something on social media recently where you were karting. Uh, there was an incident, and I think you hurt your ribs. I'm not sure how current that, that vision was. Are you okay? Um, how the ribs? And what did Mr. Pensky say with when you broke some ribs? I haven't seen Roger, actually. <laughs> and that's why, that's why I posted it two months after it happened. <laughs> So are you saying are you saying you race with broken ribs that young kid man who was a young fifteen year old crying it up the inside and uh yep it it took me by surprise I didn't expect it but yeah not a not the best thing is actually honestly it's the first time I've ever been flipped out of the car uh, with all the carting I've done over over the years I've I'd never been out of one and uh, yep I can say I have now yeah. On that basis, were you nursing some broken ribs toward the end of the season then? Oh, no, no, that wasn't during the season. Definitely not. I don't get in the car during the season. I, I, let's say I don't race the car in the season. That was 
literally the week after the season finished, I went and did a race. Wow. And um and you know, these young guys were thinking, Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna pass the indicum <laughs> put me on my leg. But uh, yeah, they healed up and they actually went and raced a massive event in Vegas called the Super Nationals, uh, where a lot of people come from all around the world. I uh, had a real good time there. But uh, yeah, no, I, I love Bacardi, uh, but you've got to be careful. Sure do. You've had an amazing career, Will, and I, I love the fact that you've still got, uh, like a like a Scott Dixon, some, something really strong to offer that series in a, in a competitive sense. What's the sort of immediate plans and future look like for you i would imagine the want to win another 500 is pretty high up there oh yeah you know i i'm enjoying the craft more than i ever have and i'm still working as hard as i was when i was 20 so um you know i'm going into next season with the, 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 the same determination and um obviously the indy 500 is at the top of the list and so is the championship that's exactly what I'll be going for, you know, it's it's an obvious goal, um, but you can't keep that in your mind. I don't. I think mentally, it's not good to have that goal where it pushes you to make mistakes. But uh, definitely got the fire in the belly uh, like never before, and um, I'm I'm enjoying my racing. Good on you. We're enjoying what you're doing as well. Can we? finish this up with maybe a, a little preview in your mind of the the 23 season when you look at the driver lineup the teams and so on it has the makings of being perhaps even more competitive than what we enjoyed this year and then there's a couple of changes too will i mean you you won at bell isle there's a a new detroit layout or venue and so on so, to, so tell us about that yeah it's 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 look it's going to be a tough season it is every year in indycar now yeah we have the you have a new track there, downtown Detroit, which will be really big. Um, half the track's open for free. The city's right behind it, so they're they're uh, willing to do that. And um, a tough group, I can tell you, IndyCar is so tough these days because the parity is so good. Mm. Uh, no one has an advantage, no manufacturer. All the cars are the same. But everyone in the field gets each other's data. They had to do that to prevent lawsuits uh, because you know these manufacturing pulling data. I think off the live stream, um, off the TV. So everyone sees each other's data. You can't hide anything, and and there's just so much effort put into driving details. You know, we had dart fish where you have the shadow car, OB. Yeah, uh, you, know, you have the you have the dart fishes that uh, I don't know if they use in supercars, but they film certain sectors of the racetrack, and you will get the fastest sector of each session from that track i've overlaid a shadow car it's a video overlaid over you also you can see exactly where the speed is if they're using curb online and and the, the amount of data analysis video analysis now is crazy um, and it's making it an extremely tough driver series but it's great and it's like going to college for for driving and um i'm really enjoying it we're, we're super proud of what you've achieved in 2022 i know that's your main focus um for next year we'd love to think will before we let you go that maybe at some point we could tempt you back for another another bathurst 1000 more supercars time would that still interest you oh absolutely i've uh it's just got to be it's very tough to do that properly when you have to spend the whole season over here you can't go back and test and um but i i want i'm going to do it i want to do it I think it's just such a great event and I love the cars. So um, I'm waiting for the right opportunity and time that that uh, that I'm willing to, you know, uh, what I would say is it takes a little bit away from your IndyCar season if you were to fully commit to wanting to be competitive there or at least, you know, do a good job for whatever team you may drive for. So, but yeah, definitely on my list um, and yeah, who, who doesn't want to do bathers? Exactly. We'll get off this Zoom call and I'll bet your phone rings pretty quickly thereafter. Uh, thank you very much for, for talking to us, to you and the family. All the very best for the fe uh, festive season. And on behalf of all the speedcafe.com readers, uh, all the very best for season 2023. Excellent. Thank you, Rusty. I appreciate it. Appreciate you having me on. Thank you. There he is, Will Power, our latest guest 
on the KTM Summer Grill. And we will have another high-profile player from the world of motorsport right here tomorrow. As a part of this year's Summer Grill, our great partner in KTM each week has a special prize pack to give away, which includes a stool, a stubby holder, and a KTM hat. Very cool additions for your man cave, your garage, or just for around the barbecue. To enter, all you've got to do is head to speedcafe.com or click on the link description below, and you could be in the running. And check out, of course, tomorrow's next edition of the KTM Summer Grill right here at speedcafe.com.